Okay, so last meeting we were talking about uh, virtual memory. The idea of virtual memory, of course, is to allow processes to uh, access uh, memory area or amount of memory that is quite large and to do that it has to uh, use uh, some disk space. So this basically summarizes the idea of the virtual memory where in the process we'll see that it has access to a large amount of memory but essentially you have a limited memory and uh, the memory, uh, the data will be placed in the secondary storage to accommodate this large uh, virtual uh, address space as seen by the processes. Right? And uh, I showed you, I've shown you last time the allocation of uh, the virtual address, frame, address space, uh, wherein we have uh, we, we showed using GDB the different uh, mem memory regions that are uh, assigned or allocated to uh, a Linux process. Right? And this is the typical organization. You have the code section, the section, the heap section, and this. So, makita nyo doon na merong uh, pages, uh, at least three pages dun sa GDB na makita for the code data, and then you have the stack, the bottom, and the heap. Hindi nyo nakita yung heap dun sa, ano, sa, G, uh, sa GDB kasi wala pa naman tayong call sa malo. So, ang nakita nyo lang doon, malamang code, data, BSS, tatlong, uh, tatlong sections. And then, some memory map area for uh, the runtime libraries. So there are uh, C runtime libraries that are needed by the processes. So nakamap na yan dito sa somewhere here. Right? Uh, shared memory by mapping pages read write into virtual address space. And uh, pages can be shared during fork with uh, speeding uh, process creation. So recall that when we create a new process, we use the fork system call. Uh, and the fork system call, the behavior is basically uh, the parent process is, uh, the address space of the parent process is uh, copied and then control is transferred to that address space. Right? So it actually speeds up uh, uh, process creation. So ito yung nakita nyo sa GDB, yung mga C runtime, G live C, meron kayong mga kitang mga G live C, kahit nandito yun, which basically are uh, part of the C runtime and they are shared by different processes to conserve memory. So, okay, so you have a program from the disk, okay, and your go the operating system will have a module called loader that will read the contents of the program, the executable from the disk, and then uh, allocate memory for it. Okay. And uh, the idea here is, <clears throat> if you have a large program, say Firefox, and you load, should you load it in the all of Firefox modules, should you load it in the main memory at the same time? Or, or uh, should you allocate uh, all the pages it needs right, when it is loaded? Right. So that is quite uh, uh, not a good practice because uh, what will happen is some of the modules of the Firefox program will not be, will not be used. Right. For example, meron kang a module yung Firefox na nagpiplay ng video. So kung wala ka namang, wala ka namang i-view na YouTube video, you don't need to load the, 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 uh, the module for uh, playing video from the disk. Okay? So initially, the part, ang ilo-load mo lang na component ng Firefox will be those that basically render the page, simple pages only. Okay? So the idea of demand paging is uh, you only bring into the memory kung ano yung module na kailangan mo. Okay? So, essentially, a process will be, no, yung Firefox process or the PDF uh, viewer process. Ma-allocatean sila ng pages. Pero hindi lahat na hindi lahat na kailangan ay allocate sa kanya. Okay? So, this is called demand paging. So, the advantage of this is uh, less I.O. is needed. Okay? Kasi hindi mo naman kailangan. Huwag mo nang basahin yun. Makang gano'n. Uh, less memory needed so yung pang-play ng video hindi mo na kailangan lagi sa memory yun so meron ka bang available na memory for other process increasing the, multi the degree of multiprogramming faster response okay? kasi uh, konti lang yung nilo-load mo 
and of course more users. Right? So uh, this is uh, similar to paging system with swapping. Ano yung difference ng demand paging sa paging system with swapping? Yung yung demand paging. Ah, uh, sige, yung yung ano, yung the origin the main uh, the paging system with swapping, you swap the entire process, all the pages associated with an entire process. Whereas in demand paging, you only swap in or swap out portions of the page pages allocated to a process. So, I want you to remember that when an operating system loads a program to memory via the loader, ang inaallocate niya ay pages, right? Pages meaning it's part of the virtual uh, memory and the space, right? So, ang tawag na lang dito ay hindi swapper, but rather pager or a lazy swapper. Right? So, uh, with swapping, uh, the pager guesses which pages will be used before swapping out again. Okay? And, uh, uh, so, ang ginagawa lang dito is yung mga kailangan ng ilalagay sa memory. Now, the question is, how do you determine the pages na ilalagay niyo sa memory. Okay? So there are several approaches uh, to that and we'll discuss them later. So we need to have a new memory management unit functionality to em to implement the demand paging. Okay? We need kasi hindi lahat hindi lahat ng pages na should sa process ay swap in and swap out mo. Only portions of uh, of the address space of the process. Yung ibang pages lang, subset lang. Okay? So, kailangan ng additional hardware uh, for that. Okay? If pages needed are already in memory resident, then wala siyang uh, uh, okay, walang difference from the paging. Pag wala sa memory, okay, uh, you need to detect and load the page into memory from the storage without changing the program behavior and without programmer need, needing to change the code. So, essentially, yung concept ng demand paging is it helps the programming uh, programmer to focus on kung baga, wala na akong pakialam, always na yung bahala. Okay? Iba yung perspective niya about program execution and the OS will be responsible for doing this transparently. Okay? So, that's the idea of demand paging. So, for the hardware support, kailangan ng tinatawag na valid and invalid bit. Okay? So, dun sa original na discussion ng paging, meron tayong valid sa invalid bit. Yung function nun, sa original paging is to determine whether uh, a particular entry in the page table is associated to a particular process. It is invalid pag hindi siya associated sa isang specific process. Okay? So, dito, okay, uh, meron ng additional meaning yung valid and invalid bit. With each page table entry, a valid or invalid bit is associated. And pag valid siya, nasa memory yung page na yun, nasa physical memory. Pag invalid siya, wala siya sa memory. Nasa disk siya. Okay? In, the previous, in the previous discussion about paging, this bit is used for to indicate whether uh, the purpose is basically for protection. Okay? Here, it is to determine whether a page is in the physical memory or on the disk. Okay? So, uh, initially, uh, all the bits are set to invalid, so during initialization. And siyempre, demand paging yan. So, pag may hinanap ka na frame, wala pa, okay, iloload mo yun. So, this will be the uh, example of uh, a page table with the valid and invalid so, ito yung frame number, ito yung index. This refers to the page number, wala dito. And you have the frame number here. During memory management unit address translation, if valid invalid bit is in the page table entry is set to I, then that triggers a page fault. Whenever a page fault happens, meron ka dapat tinatawag na page fault handler. Okay. So, parang chinect ng, ano, ng MMU. Oops! Invalid yan. Okay? So, magti-trigger siya ng trap or exception and merong tinatawag na exception handler para doon. And then, ang purpose doon, which is actually ginagawa ng operating system, is to load the data from the disk para ilagay sa main memory and then to update the page table accordingly. Okay? You follow? So, this is an example. This is a page table when some pages are not in 
the main memory. So this is the logical uh, address space of the process. Meron siyang 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pages. These are, this is the page table. So ito yung uh, page number and yung corresponding na uh, entries. So may mga i dyan. This i represents the pages that are not in the physical memory. So mapansin nyo, yung mga V, yun yung valid. Ibig sabihin, nasa physical memory, nasa main memory, limbawa, yung page 0, which is mapped to frame 4, is in the physical memory. Yung page 2, which is mapped to physical location C, uh, 6, nandito siya. Okay, so C, uh, C valid siya. And then, uh, 9, uh, F, which is for page number uh, 5. Okay, so, nakalagay yan dito. The rest are still in the uh, in the disk. So uh, A B C D E F G H. So, A B C D E F G H. So, sabihin, pag may inaccess habang nag-execute yung process, pag may inaccess siya na page, halimbawa, let's try uh, ano dito, D. So nandito na yung execution D. Pag punta niya sa ano, so this is page number three, makita niya na invalid. Wala pa sa memory. So, ang gagawin ng page fault handler is hahanapin niya dun sa uh, disk, yung D. Ilalagay niya halimbawa sa available na frame. Let's say 11. So, ang gagawin niya, uh, alagay niya dito 11 and then alagay niya dito V. You get the idea? So, that is what we mean by uh, demand paging. Okay? So, initially, hindi lahat ilo-load dito. Okay. Pagkailangan lang, sakalang siya ilo-load. Sakalang siya lalagyan ng entry sa page table. Okay. So, page fault, if there is a reference to a page, the first reference to that page will drop to the operating system for the page fault. And uh, the operating system looks at another table to decide, uh, should it abort or wala lang sa memory. Pwede kasi yung ano yan, pwede wala sa memory or may error talaga, invalid talaga yung access. Okay. It's for protection. So find free frame, swap page into the frame by skin to this operation, reset the tables to indicate page now in the main memory, and restart the instruction that cost the page. Okay? Kasi ang mangyayari dyan, by instruction, let's say move AX tapos sa memory location. Wala, wala pala dito, page fault yun. So kailangan i-restart mo ulit yung instruction na nag-cost ng page fault. Okay? So this is uh, the steps in handling a page fault. So load M. Okay? It's the instruction. So, M is uh, some uh, data. Okay? Oops, wala dito. Triggers a trap. The operating system kernel. The page is in the backing store. Load it in the physical memory. Uh, update the page table and then load M. Okay? We start the instruction. So, that's how it's done. So, what are the some aspects of demand paging? Okay? So, extreme case, you start the process with no pages in memory. So the OS sets the instruction pointer to the first instruction of the process and what will happen is kumbaga wala kang nang i-allocate and then that will trigger a page fault and uh, for every other process pages uh, other process uh, process pages on first access okay and then especially uh, pure demand paging uh, actually a given instruction uh, a given instruction could access multiple pages which actually trigger multiple page faults. So, for some architecture, uh, usually sa lahat, move AX tapos sa memory location. Yung sa memory location na yun, usually, isang page lang yun. Sa isa, contained lang sa isang page yun. But there are instructions na kung saan multiple pages ang pwede niyang i-access. So, uh, that will trigger multiple page faults. Uh, hindi lang isang page ang hinahanap niya. So, uh, so this one here, consider the fetch and decode of instruction which adds two numbers from memory and stores back result to memory. So, yeah, that's what we mean by that. So, what are the hardware requirements for demand paging? So, ito na yung kanina, you have the valid and invalid bit which exist in the uh, original paging discussion. And you need the secondary memory which is the disk, the swap partition. <coughs> and the instruction restart. So normally these are supported by uh, the architecture already. Okay. 
So concerning uh, instruction restart, okay? So consider an instruction that could access several different locations. So kailangan mo nang uh, i-restart yon and then basically load everything, okay? So, yeah. so minsan may problema pa pag nag-overlap for some architecture, but most modern architecture do not provide this instruction na merong multiple uh, memory locations na access. Okay? So, performance of demand paging. Okay, uh, okay. so, kumbaga, you are an operating system designer. Uh, yung hardware mo, merong paging support. Let's say, Intel X86 32-bit or 64-bit. And you implement paging. And you try to uh, provide virtual memory for virtual memory support for your operating system. So, kailangan mo nang implement, mag implement ng demand paging. Ano yung implication in terms of performance when uh, uh, using demand paging? Ang kagandahan kasi ng demand paging, yung user processes, kahit 4 gig lang yung RAM mo, yung isang process, pwede, niyang, pwede siya mag-consume ng 8 gig RAM, for example using virtual memory and demand paging. Pero anong implication sa performance? So, obviously, you will notice na may performance degradation na agad siya kasi meron ng involved na disk access, di ba? So, once you have disk access, meron na agad yung ano, performance degradation. But you have to balance uh, yung, uh, yung benefit na makukuha mo by implementing paging and uh, the performance associated with the demand paging, right? So basically, these steps here uh, outlines the different steps kung paano, ano yung nangyayari. The worst case, sa demand paging. So trapping to the operating system during page fault, saving the process state, reading the, the disk, uh, re reading the block from the disk, and then returning back control to the uh, process na nag-trigger ng page fault. So mahaba, maraming steps, right? But they can actually be summarized into three steps. Yung servicing the interrupt, okay? reloading the page, and restarting the process. So ito yung main, main contributor dun sa performance ng demand paging. Yung servicing the interrupt, reading the page, and restarting the process. Okay? So this is just a formula of the uh, what you call the effective access time during demand paging. So you have the memory access, the page calls, Swapping and then the swapping in. Swapping out, swapping in. Okay. So, uh, it's a formula to uh, describe the page fault. Uh, the, the performance of demand paging. And uh, meron siyang uh, parameter for the page fault rate which describes uh, how much okay, how much paging happens. Okay. So, this is the formula. And, okay. So this is just an example. So given ka ng memory access time na 200 nanoseconds and you have an average page fault, uh, page fault service time na 8 milliseconds. So you can get this uh, value and then, yeah. Uh, this sample computation, the, there is a slowdown by a factor of 40. So there are different techniques to be able to improve the performance when you're using uh, demand paging. This is an illustration on how uh, to do that. So it shows that one page fault in every 400,000 memory accesses. Right? So how do you optimize demand paging? Right? Uh, uh, subspace I.O. is faster than the file system I.O. even if on the same device. So in order to... No, uh, yung Linux. It supports it ng, ano, ng uh, demand paging. Right? So kailangan nyo ng subpartition. So, which basically speeds up the demand paging process. Sinasabi dito na iba yung swap partition sa regular na disk partition. Kasi, you have a faster uh, uh, faster performance of the swap partition. Like, walang iba yung file system type mode. Okay? So, the swap is allocated in larger chunks and less management needed than file system. Okay? So, mas, mas faster siya in a way. Uh, you can copy the entire process image to swap space uh, at process load time. Then uh, uh, page in and out of the swap space. Okay, so this is part of the. Kung bagay yung buong process ang mo, uh, swap out mo. Okay. Uh, 
uh, demand uh, demand page in uh, in from uh, program binary on disk, but discard rather than paging out when freeing the frame. Okay, so instead of paging, instead of writing it to the disk, okay, you simply discard, okay, discard the no, discard the, the page, okay, and then load it from the disk itself, uh, from the program binary, from the original binary, right, this one. Okay, it still need uh, subspace, and uh, so mobile system, I think we discussed this last time, uh, they don't support swapping. So, the demand page from the file system and reclaim uh, read-only pages. Okay, so, these are some of the approaches to optimize the performance degradation that is caused by demand paging. Okay. So, so, the next one is copy on write. Okay. So, an advantage of uh, demand paging is... Uh, sharing of pages. Okay. So, yung copy on write or cow na tinatawag, is allows uh, both parent and the child processes to initially share the same pages in uh, the main memory. So, pag nag-fork uh, ka, diba? so, kopyahin mo yung page, uh, yung address space ng parent, then you overwrite mo yun. Okay? Kung walang modification, okay, uh, as is lang siya kasi mag-execute yung child process and yung fork if PID is equal to zero if greater is less uh, greater than zero okay, child process so they will execute the same piece of code unless you call execve diba? yung execve diba? siya yung mag-replace nung content nung ano nung uh, binary nung child process okay? so CAO allows more efficient process creation as only modified pages are copied Okay. In general, free pages are allocated from a pool of zero fill-on-demand pages. Okay. So, meron kang, uh, di ba meron tayong free frame list? Meron din tayong free pages list. Okay. And dito kinukuha ngayon yung mga pages na gagamitin when you are allocating uh, uh, new pro or when you are creating processes using form. Okay. So, Example, uh, okay, so you have a parent process and you have say, a child process, okay? So they will be sharing, the, uh, this is the logical address space of the parent, this is the logical address space of the child, for example, and in the physical memory, they will be sharing initially the same pages. So walang, ano, walang, uh, walang uh, changes na ginagawa kasi dun sa memory area. Uh, I think I mentioned this last time when you when you open a uh, uh, page sharing I discussed last time when you open a Firefox process nagrarana siya then you create a new Firefox process right uh, it runs pas mabilis mag spawn kasi nakaload na sa memory yung shared pages nila right uh, okay so yung uh, Yung Linux merong v fork na version ng fork, okay? Which uh, ang ginagawa nito hindi siya ni share yung ano, hindi siya ni share yung process. Kung baga, yung v fork ang mangyayari, mafi freeze tong parent process. Yung traditional na fork is sabay pa rin sila mag-execute using the same pages, okay? Pero yung v fork masususpend yung parent process and hahayaan ngayon na magrun yung child process. Si so, give sa And uh, Yung idea ng copy on write is pag minodify lang nitong process na to, okay, yung page C, saka lang siya mag allocate ng bagong page. Kasi, kumbaga, unique na ito, yung contest nito, unique na dun sa process na yun. Can get the idea of copy on write? Okay. So, that's what we mean by... Uh, So, you can try this. Uh, okay, so, this is the V4 uh, system uh, call. So, what it does is to create a child process and block the parent. Kasi di ba yung traditional form ang mangyayari, sabay pa rin mag execute yung parent sa kayong child. Dalawang output yung for nag-printf. So, this one here is 
B4, right? Okay, so let's copy on right. Okay. So what will happen if there are no frames? Right? Okay. So what will happen is that, siempre, okay, uh, when you uh, let's see, uh, okay. so you see, the command cat proc mem info will uh, show you the memory uh, statistics. Okay. So you see, see here the different. Uh, Am the, am the amount of memory allocated right, to different processes. Right. And uh, meron nakalagay dyan, mem free. Right. So which basically the amount of physical memory available. What if uh, ubus na? Right. So uh, it's used up by the process pages. So also in demand from the kernel, IO buffers, etc. So the memory Again, it's shared by both the kernel and user processes. And if you have several processes running, it's shared yon. And uh, it's possible na ito, maubos yan. Okay? So, anong gagawin mo ngayon pag wala ng frame na available? Okay? Okay, so, you need to have what you call page replacement. Okay? So, full na yung physical memory. Itong isang process, nagre-request siya ng memory and tapos yung memory na yon uh, yung uh, page na yun ay nasa disk block pa okay. ano yung gagawin niya ngayon so you need to have page replacement algorithm so the algorithm uh, you can should you terminate the process sabihin mo agad you are out of memory you cannot run anymore you will be terminated that's one option or you can swap the entire process out of the main memory and then load it later pag meron ng available okay or you can simply replace a page. Okay? So that's the idea. And in the in page replacement, our goal is to uh, minimize the number of page faults. Okay? Kasabi natin, in demand paging, meron tayong page fault rate. If you have a very high page fault rate, the effective access time is high. Okay? So, What do we do? Okay, so, so we have uh, page replacement uh, algorithms. Right? So we can prevent over allocation of memory by modifying page fault service routine to include page replacement. Right? Uh, we, can all, uh, we, we use a modified or dirty bit to reduce the overhead of page transfers wherein only modified pages are written to disk. And uh, page replacement completes the separation between logical memory and physical memory. Okay. So, the idea of page replacement is, yun yeah, na, nga, ito yung parang uh, nagpo-provide ng mechanism na yung isang process meron siyang uh, access sa unlimited amount of memory due to page replacement. And it is done transparently in demand paging. So, demand paging, ilo-load mo lang yung page na kailangan mo. And uh, when you load that, it, it might come from the disk. But what if puno na yung, ano, puno na yung uh, physical memory? Wala ka ng frame na available. So, you resort to page replacement. Kasi hindi naman lagi lahat ginagamit yung mga nasa, main, nasa, nasa physical memory. So, it's an example of uh, oh, the need for page replacement. So there are there are uh, two processes. You have uh, process from user one, and you have a process from user two. Okay. So what do you observe? The monitor here represents the operating system. So this is the physical memory composed of one, two, three, four, five, eight frames. Okay. The first two frames are already filled with the monitor or the kernel or the operating system. Uh, the rest are already filled with entries okay and uh, this is the page table for user uh, one so uh, this is page zero h is mapped to frame number three 
uh, page 1 is mapped to frame number 4, page 2 mapped to uh, frame number 5, J, uh, page 3 map page 3, nandito na ba sa memory? Wala pa, okay? So, tapos ito naman, ganun din, okay? So, A, uh, uh, yung 0, nasa 6, okay? Yung uh, B, wala pa, okay? Hindi pa naman siya ina-access, okay? And yung 2, uh, nandun sa 2, okay? So, D, D, and number 3, E, nandun sa 7. So, itong part ito, ang current na nag execute ay yung process 1. Uh, process from user 1. So, program counter is here. And the instruction it is executing is load M. It's trying to access uh, a memory area, M. So, ang gagawin ngayon, i-execute yung instruction na yon, and there will be a memory reference. When you have a memory reference, so M yung hinahanap niya, pupunta siya sa page table. M. Nandun, so, yung M, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, ah, pansin niya na, wala pang, wala pang, uh, wala pang slot doon sa page table. Pero, kailangan nang i-execute doon, di ba? You get the idea? Do you follow? So, ang mangyayari, magkakaroon ngayon ng page fault. Invalid to, sa so, ibig sabihin, nandun sa disk yung block na yun. Kaso, puno na yung, ano, puno na yung physical memory. Di ba? Ito yung nag execute niyan. Anong gagawin mo? you need to perform page replacement. Okay? Pipili ka ng isa dyan, lalagay, babalik mo siya doon sa disk, tapos i -re replace mo dito. Alam mo, A, napili mo. A. So, tanggalin mo yung A, ilagay mo yung M dito, tapos update mo yung page table, ilagay mo dito 6, and then restart the instruction. You get the idea? So, that's what we mean by the need for page replacement. So find the location of the desired page uh, on the disk. Find a free frame. If there is a free frame, use it. If there is no free frame, use a page replacement algorithm to select a victim frame. Uh, and then write the victim frame to the disk if it is dirty. Okay? So one way to optimize is using a dirty bit. Kung halimbawa, si A. Si A, hindi naman siya nagbago. Pareho lang siya ng laman kung sa nakalagay doon sa, sa disk. Huwag mo na siya i-swap out. Kasi ma same lang naman sila eh. So, para nakapag-save ka ng disk I.O. Time. You get the idea? Okay. So, uh, you bring the desired page into the newly, uh, to the free frame and then update, update the page table and then uh, you restart the instruction. Okay? That caused the trap. So note that potentially two page transfer per page fault, increasing the effective access time. Okay? So yun yung ibig sabihin. Dalawa kasi, yung swapping out nung napili mong ano, max, uh, kung may worst case, is swap out mo siya kasi, kasi nabago siya, dirty na siya, so i-write out mo siya. Or kung clean naman siya, wag mo nang i-write out, diretsyo mo na ilagay si M dyan. Okay? So that's what we mean by page placement. So this is what uh, another view of... Uh, page replacement. Okay? So, the question now is, uh, how do you select which page to replace? Okay, ano yung policy mo? Okay? So, we have different uh, algorithms for that. Uh, we have the frame allocation algorithm to determine how many frames to, to give each process and which frames to replace. Okay? and the page replacement algorithm. Okay, so, in the case of uh, page replacement, sabi natin, yung page replacement essential siya para ma-complete yung unlimited uh, view ng user process na meron siyang access sa unlimited memory. Okay? And to do that, meron tayong page replacement. And page replacement would require some algorithms for selecting which frames to uh, select or how much Actually, how much frame to allocate for a process during startup and how to replace uh, the pages. Okay? And the goal of uh, page replacement algorithm is to uh, find the lowest page fault rate. So, ang gusto mo, uh, ma-minimize yung page fault rate kasi expensive yung operation na yun. Okay? 
So for the succeeding discussion, ang idea dito is we evaluate the algorithm by running it on a particular string of memory references, basically addresses, okay? and computing the number of page faults on that, on that string. When you say page fault, ito yung uh, kailangan mag-load ng disk from, uh, na, kailangan mag-load sa memory from disk ng isang page. Okay? So, you just edit, uh, okay? so siguro mas maganda pag uh, example na lang. So, in, uh, in this example, uh, ito, yung ito yung gagamitin na reference string. Ibig sabihin, page 7, page 0, page 1, page 2, page 0. Ibig sabihin, yung isang process, habang nagraran siya, ito yung uh, mga memory accesses na ginagawa niya. Okay? Get the idea? Okay. And essentially, if you have uh, a large number of frames, the number of page fault is minimized. Kasi marami, kung baga yung physical mo, memory mo, maraming slots dyan. So if you have a lot of slots here, hindi mo na kailangang magkaroon ng page replacement. Kasi laging may available slots yan eh. So the typical trend is that, yan, if, as you increase the number of frames, the number of page fault or the page fault rate decreases. Okay? Get the idea? Yeah. So, let's discuss the first algorithm uh, called the first in, first out algorithm. Okay? So, in order to uh, study this algorithm, ito yung ating reference string. So, these are the page numbers. Okay? And this is, these are the frames. So, we assume here in this illustration na meron tayong three frames. Remember, page sa logical memory, frame sa physical memory. Okay? So, may mapping yan via the page table. Okay? So, ang ginagawa natin dito sa pag-study ng page replacement algorithm is we're looking into this, ito yung, ano natin, ito yung uh, physical memory. So, dito merong, merong eight frames. Dito naman, sa example natin, merong three frames. So, an example is, okay, seven. Seven. Uh, since this is the first time that this is accessed, wala pa siya dun sa uh, wala pa siya dun sa physical memory. So, ilalagay mo siya. So, that will trigger one page fault. Okay? And then, zero. Wala pa siya dun sa physical memory. That will trigger a page fault. So, you place that in the memory. So, first in, first out. Okay? Then, page one. Nandun na ba siya sa physical uh, physical memory? Wala pa. Nandito na nga. Ilalagay mo ngayon siya. So, bawat, pag wala siya dun sa, sa frame, or wala siyang, wala siyang associated with the frame, wala siyang physical memory, that is a page fault. Now, yung zero, nandun na ba siya sa main memory? Yes. So, walang page fault. Yung three, nandun na ba siya sa main memory? Nandun na ba siya? Wala pa. Wala pa. So, ang gagawin mo ngayon is, uh, i-replace -re mo ngayon yung Next niya, which is 0, so 3. Okay? So, it's first in, first out. Okay? So, all in all, given this 3 frame and this reference string, we have 15 page faults. Okay? So, optimized na ba siya? Okay? Optimized na ba siya? 15 page faults given this reference string and this number of frames? Yun ba yung pinakamaliit na number of page faults? So, essentially, hindi siya. Okay? And it also suffers from what we call Belady's Anomaly. Ano itong Belady's Anomaly? Itong uh, typical behavior is that as you increase the number of frames, the number of page fault decreases. Itong Belady's Anomaly, if using the, using the first in, first out algorithm, okay, using the first in, first out algorithm, uh, Given this reference string, what will happen is, at some point, pag dinagdagan mo pa yung number of frames, ginawa mong apat halimbawa, yung page fault niya biglang tataas. Okay? When dapat, yung normal behavior niya is pababa. Okay? So yun yung problem with the first in, first out algorithm. Okay? So dito, to yung pinakahuli na, na ilagay, so i-replace mo ngayon yung next, which is uh, zero. Okay, so, kaya three yan. So, you see the process. Okay? So, that is the first in, first out of the return. Okay? So, 
our last slide slide for today is yung optimal algorithm. So the idea of uh, optimal of the optimal algorithm is to replace the page that will not be used for the longest period of time. So yun naman yung ano yun naman yung pinaka ideal. Right? Okay? Alin dito sa mga entries na nasa page table ang uh, hindi gagamitin in the future? Diba? Yun yung tatanggalin ko. Diba? Tama ba? Yun yung pinaka-optimal. Pero medyo mahirap ano yan. Mahirap gawin yun. Because you can't read the future. So you need to do some approximation. So, using the same reference string and using the same number of frames, dito, 15 page fault sa FIFO. So optimal, ilang page fault? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 page faults lang. Which is actually better than the first in first out page replacement algorithm. You get the idea? So that's what we mean by the optimal algorithm. Okay? So write your questions on your one fourth kung meron kayong tanong or malabong part dyan sa discussion and then pass the paper. Okay?